Last month, I shared with you my health goals for the rest of the year and my proven strategy to achieve them. I promised I would keep you guys updated on how it's going. So today I'm gonna to share what I've accomplished, what's worked and what needs some adjusting. To recap, my health goals were to be active every day. I work from home as a one woman entrepreneur, working on my website, filming videos, developing recipes, and I'm currently working on a cookbook for high protein, low carb recipes that's gonna come out in 2025, so next year. But I'm also a wife and a mom to two teenage boys that are very active in sports. They're in multiple sports. And if you're a mom, dad, grandparent of these multi-sport athletes, you know how taxing it can be and that your weekends and evenings are not your own. I say that just to paint a picture of how busy my life is. And it's just easy to put working out and going for walks and staying active aside and just focus on what I'm doing just to get ahead. But like I explained in the last video, staying active every day is a major player in living a long life where you're cognitively and physically capable. And I know I'm not alone in this. I know a lot of you are very busy too, which is why I hope my journey inspires you and you'll wanna follow along and maybe just implement some of these changes yourself. And I welcome you to work towards these goals with me. Next, I wanna be compliant with taking my supplements and vitamins every day. I don't get all of my nutrients from food alone. And I do notice a difference in my energy and mood when I consistently take my supplements versus when I don't. My third goal is to make sure I'm getting enough protein, at least to maintain, but hopefully build muscle, which for me, that's around 100 to 120 grams of protein a day, at least. In my original video, I explained the importance of eating higher protein and why I've made the switch to focus on higher protein rather than focusing on a number of carbs that I wanna eat a day. This is also why I'm writing a book about it. I wanna focus on sleep quality for the rest of the year. Sleep is so important for cognitive and physical functioning. It helps with hormone regulation. I went years being sleep deprived because I was so focused focused on the hustle of trying to work full-time as a pharmacist, be a wife and a mom, and build my website and YouTube channel that I sacrificed sleep in order to get it all done. And as a result, my hormones started to suffer. My estrogen was high, my cortisol was like non-existent. I was so tired during the day, I started having these intense cravings and started to gain weight. It wasn't until I focused on sleep and started to change the way I viewed food and started to eat higher protein that I reversed it. I started losing weight, started feeling better, had more energy during the day. So sleep is extremely important and something I wanna continue focusing on the rest of the year and probably the rest of my life. My last goal is to improve my posture. I sit in front of the computer a lot, working, typing in recipes, I'm cooking in the kitchen. I also like to scroll on my phone a lot and that's something I should probably restrict as well, but that's for another time. But I find myself just kind of hunched over and my neck down a lot and it started to cause like some neck pain and like a pain underneath my shoulder. So that's something I want to work on consciously staying upright. And I have some tools that I've been using to help with that. My strategy to help accomplish these goals is to make tiny changes in my current lifestyle. It's what I did to help me lose 40 pounds that I had packed on over the years of just the hustle and not getting sleep and eating poorly. And I know it's gonna help me with this next level in my health journey. For my fitness goal, I wanted to build a habit of being active every day. My first mini goal was to do at least 10 minutes of activity every day, whether it was weightlifting, walking, Peloton, or just stretching and core work. I wanted to get used to doing some sort of activity every day, no matter how intense it was, and just for 10 minutes. It can go beyond that, but it needs to be a minimum of 10 minutes. I know 10 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but the way I see it is that 10 minutes of activity is getting me closer to my fitness health goals than if I was sedentary. When I started this challenge, I created a spreadsheet that I updated either throughout the day or sometimes it was the next day, but it tracks each goal. And if I accomplish that goal for the day, which it would turn green. And if I didn't do it or I didn't work on it, then it was shown in red for the day. For my 10 minutes of activity, you can see that I only missed three days, which I think is great. I mean, this isn't quite a month when I filmed this, but I'm not trying to be 100% perfect. I'm just trying to build that habit of being active. I mean, it would be nice if I was perfect, but I'm, not, I'm human, I know myself. Things are gonna come up. The important thing is, is that the majority of the time I am working on accomplishing these goals and I'm not gonna let one or two or three little slip ups keep me from progressing forward. You can see there are some things that I need to work on on this chart, but I'm gonna get into that a little later. When it came to being active, I really worked on everything here from stretching to help with flexibility, core work, weightlifting, some walking. Some of it was really just for 10 minutes, but most of the time it was around a 30 to 40 minute stretch. We donated our gym equipment to the youth based 
baseball facility my husband helps lead. So we have access to that space to work out in the mornings. I try and get over there most days, but on the times that I can, I just try and stay active at home by doing some walks or stretching or hopping on the Peloton. For this next month, I wanna continue my minimum of 10 minutes of daily activity, but I also wanna add some specific activities for certain days. Lifting weights is so important for building strong muscle and bones. So I want to lift weights three days a week. And then I also wanna do some cardiovascular activity, which is also gonna help with bones and muscle, but I wanna start walking and be consistent with my Peloton, either one of those two, two days a week. And then on the other days, I can still do some stretching or core work, yoga, just still being active every day. This last month, my mini goal for my vitamin compliance was to use a pill box to fill all of the vitamins and supplements that I take and take them all in the morning. And then I also had swapped out some of the duplicate supplements that was already in my Gem Bite Daily Multi. I've been taking Gem Bite Daily Multi for several months now. It has over 20 real food vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and prebiotics. Plus, I love that it's whole food sourced. Why is that so important? Well, it's because because your body absorbs nutrients better from food than it does from synthetic sources. It's a multivitamin made from real food and it's all packed in this bite. It has turmeric for skin and gut protection. It has zinc from pumpkin seeds. It even has vitamin K2 sourced from chickpeas and vitamin K2 is essential for bone health. So taking Gem Bite Daily Multi is going to supply my body the nutrients it needs to get that bone support I'm after. It contains a vitamin B complex sourced from germinated quinoa sprouts, prebiotics, probiotics, ginger, and more, all from real food sources. Right now, Gem is offering 50% off of your first month. Just go to dailygem.com slash ketofocus and use code ketofocus at checkout to get your exclusive offer. This is such a good deal and a great incentive to try it, so don't miss out. Real foods give real results, and I know I'm not getting all the nutrients I need from diet alone, so that's why I like to supplement with the Gem Bite Daily Multi. According to my tracker, there's only three days that I missed taking my vitamins. One was because I was out of town that weekend and forgot to pack my vitamins. And then later on, these two, I forgot to refill my pill organizer right away. So my three week pill organizer worked, but I just need to do a better job of refilling it when it needs it. This next month, I wanna continue using my three week pill box and just be more conscious of when I need to refill it. In order to ensure that I was getting enough protein throughout the day, I wanted to focus on the most important meal, which was breakfast. There's a lot of research that's come out to show that eating higher protein for your first meal of the day is really good to help regulate your hormones and help keep you full and satisfied, which helps with weight loss. So I was aiming for at least 20 to 30 grams of protein in the morning. And I was completely successful at this. I think a lot of it had to do with adding the caramel protein shake to my coffee in place of creamer. That's really been a game changer at giving me that protein boost. And I've been focused on making easy high protein breakfast options. Most of the time I would do a half a cup of cottage cheese with some fruit, which this will give me 13 grams of protein. And then I would do something like one or two hard boiled eggs or just some fried eggs. All of that with the combination of the protein coffee gives me over 30 grams of protein in the morning. For this next month, I want to focus on lunch as well as continuing to eat my high protein meal for breakfast. Lunch has always been a struggle for me. Sometimes I forget to eat lunch because I'm not hungry until around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's usually when I have to get into mom mode and transport kids to sports and to and from school. And sometimes it's just easy to make a sandwich with some deli meat and some keto bread. And let's be honest, that really doesn't give me a lot of protein there. For lunch, I wanna count my protein and make sure I'm getting 30 to 40 grams of protein in that meal. I still wanna do the easy route and I could still have a sandwich, but I should be pairing it with something like protein chips or some hard boiled eggs, jerky, anything that gives me an extra protein boost. Today, I made this cottage cheese lox bowl, which is a play on a lox bagel, but instead of piling the smoked salmon, onions, capers on a bagel, I'm piling it over a bed of cottage cheese. Sounds gross, but it's actually really good. This is the type of recipes that you're gonna find in my cookbook. I have a lot of easy high protein meals that you can make in minutes. And this is actually one of them that's gonna go in there. To help improve my sleep quality, I wanted to not be on my phone after 9 p.m. because I felt like it was just keeping me from going to sleep at night and just activating my brain too much. I just struggled with going to sleep as soon as I hit the pillow. And as you can see, this still needed some work. 
It was really hard for me to put down the phone on the weekends just because I usually stay up later. And there's just so much going on in the news with the hurricanes. And I, plus I discovered Poshmark live shows. So that kind of was addicting and kept me up. I like to shop a lot. This month, I wanna continue with the no phone after 9 p.m. Maybe not so much on the weekends, but I wanna add more of a healthy bedtime routine. When I was in pharmacy school, we learned how to counsel patients who are having trouble sleeping on how to take their medications, but also the importance of sleep hygiene, which really just sets the stage for sleep. You wanna establish a bedtime routine, turn off all the lights, turn down the temperature. And one of the most important things that a lot of people don't get right is that your bed is for sleeping, that you shouldn't be doing anything else in your bed. So no reading, no watching TV, no scrolling on your phone, because your body starts to associate that stuff that's very activating with your bed instead of something that should be kind of calming your nervous system, like sleep. So you're only supposed to be sleeping in your bed, not anything else, not working, not talking on the phone. So to help establish better sleep hygiene for myself, I wanted to create a bedtime routine because right now it's just basically saying goodnight to the boys and my husband, turning off the lights and climbing into bed. And sometimes I just lay there waiting to go to sleep. And I think it's because I don't really have a good routine that tells my brain that it's time to wind down and slow down and it's time for sleep. One of the things I wanna add into my routine is a skincare routine before bed. I have been really bad at washing my face at night. I don't know why, because I used to do it, but it's just one of those things I've fallen out of the habit of. And all of the day's worth of makeup and dirt and oils is just sitting on my skin. It's clogging my pores, making them bigger and aging my skin. So 30 minutes before I go to bed, I wanna wash my face and apply my skincare creams. For my face wash, I use this one by Elta MD and this silicone vibrating face wash thing. I like this cleanser because it foams and it's really easy to wipe off and it doesn't get super slimy. And then I apply my eye cream. I use this one by Neocutis and this will help with any fine lines around my eyes. And then my favorite moisturizer is this one by SkinCeuticals. It's the Triple Lipid Restore. It has ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. This cream, let me tell you, my skin just glows the next morning. And then I swipe this Lash Serum by Five Factor. It doesn't have any prostaglandins in it, which if you've done some of the research on the eyelash serums that help grow your eyelashes, prostaglandins have been associated with thinning of the fat tissue around the eyes, which can make your eyes look sunken and old this one won't do that. It really extends your eyelashes without having those prostaglandins. I'd like to eventually start using my LED mask, which I used to do every night. It only takes 10 minutes of this red light on your face, and it really does help to prevent and diminish fine lines. But like I said, I'm starting with baby steps here and having a routine of a clean face is gonna tell my body and my cells and my brain that it's time for bed. To help improve my posture, I purchased this posture corrector brace from Amazon and I tried to wear it for at least a couple hours while I was in front of the computer or just cooking in the kitchen, but it's not very comfortable. In order to get it to pull around my shoulders and my back, I've had to Velcro it really tight. So after around 30 minutes or so, it starts to irritate my skin underneath my shoulders where the straps are. And this is the smallest one they have, so I can't get a smaller size. I did think that maybe I'm supposed to wear this over a shirt, but then that would look weird. Not that I'm trying to impress anyone because I work from home and I'd only wear it at home. But you can see that my compliance was not very good. And most of these green boxes are not from me wearing this brace, but from doing a core workout, which also helps with your posture. For this next month, I wanna try that posture device that's supposed to vibrate or signal when you're slouching and then you're just gonna be cognizant to put your shoulders back. I was hoping it was gonna go on sale during Amazon Prime Days, but it didn't, so I'm just gonna pay full price for it. I'll let you know how it works next month when I do another one of these videos on an update of my health journey. But in in the meantime, if you want to watch the video on why I'm doing this and how I started it, then just click right here.